Hey everyone, welcome to the official Batch Gather YouTube channel. I'm Tyler with PropStream, and if you've ever wondered how top performers are making more calls, having better conversations, and turning prospects into clients, this is the video for you. Today, I'm giving you a complete walkthrough of Batch Dialer, the powerful dialing platform designed to help professionals like you scale your outreach and close more deals. We're gonna cover everything from setting up your campaigns and managing call lists to using smart features like call recording, voicemail drop, and real-time analytics to maximize your results. By the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to simplify your calling process and start turning more conversations into opportunities with Batch Dialer. Before we jump in, if you haven't heard already, PropStream recently acquired Batch Leads and Batch Dialer, bringing even more tools and resources to help professionals like you succeed. Let's get started. Technically, all you need to use the dialer is contact lists, phone numbers, and a campaign. I'm gonna be covering much more than that today, but if there's anything that you get stuck on or confused about, feel free to visit our help center for more resources, guides, and articles on best practices and product tattoos. We're gonna kick things off by going to our settings page where we'll set up our voicemail. You'll see there's a ton of different things you can do here, so be on the lookout for things like integrations, lead scoring, agent scripts, and lead sheets. For today, we're gonna to focus on setting up our voicemail. So start by clicking on the voicemail section. As you can see, there are several that I've created already, but we're gonna create a new one, so click on new voicemail. From here, you're gonna name the voicemail. So we'll just use test example today. Add an email for delivery. So uh, you can add multiple emails simply just by separating with a comma if you have multiple team members who would like to receive an email when you guys receive a voicemail. If you have a recording saved on your computer, you can select it from here, or if you have one uploaded to your library, today we're gonna to add a new one. This is where you would drop your custom file. If you have one saved on your computer, you'll see there's also an option for text to speech. For today, we're gonna to simply just record a new recording right within the account. We'll name this one as well, so let's just follow the same name. We'll begin the recording by clicking on this red button and then we'll end the recording by clicking on this button once we've begun. Something simple, something straightforward. So for example, hi, thank you for calling. Please leave us a message with your name, your phone number, and the address that you received a call about, and we'll give you a call back shortly. Thanks. Obviously that was a very generic voicemail recording, so you'll wanna make sure that it's a little bit more personalized to you. So we'll just go ahead and uh, save this for today and then again, hit save to confirm. The next step is going to be to purchase the phone numbers and attach that voicemail recording to those phone numbers so they're connected. And that way, anytime someone calls that number back, it gets routed to that voicemail. We'll start by clicking on phone systems, which will take us straight to our phone numbers page. And once you're on this page, you're gonna click on buy number at the top right corner. It's important to note that when you are making a selection of your phone numbers, you wanna purchase phone numbers within the same state and area code similar to the contacts that you're calling. That way it's more recognizable, giving you a higher chance of someone picking it up. So for the example, I'm gonna use the 310 area code in California. There's five of them currently available. I'm gonna select them all. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach that voice recording that we just made earlier to these phone numbers right here. Once you've made your right selections, hit agree and order now. Please note that your screen may look a little bit different depending on what plan you have. We have our basic and our advanced plan, so just be aware of that, it may look a little bit different. Now that'll take a few minutes to process. You can close this tab out and refresh your screen. So we'll just give that a minute. They should be ready now, so I'm going to search for my phone numbers just by typing the area code in the upper left-hand corner search bar here. We're gonna select all these phone numbers. You can see there's no reputation monitoring turned on. So once you select them, click on the actions dropdown and select monitor reputation. Okay, now you can see that this is in progress. Do note too as well that this feature specifically is exclusive to the advanced plan. So if you are on the basic plan, you will not have the ability to monitor your phone numbers for the spam reputation. Once your phone numbers monitoring is turned on, you can hover over the shield to see the status and a little bit more insights into the different labels that the phone carriers have. There's up to 10 phone carriers that you can see the status of. It'll have a little orange flag next to it. As you can see here, that T-Mobile has flagged this number as spam, but all the other carriers have not. So this number is still considered a good healthy phone number to use. It's a good reminder that the most important thing is to make sure that you have enough phone numbers to cover the amount of calls that you plan to make in that day. And if you ever need to change what happens when someone calls you back, you'll wanna look at the destination column 
That is simply what tells the system what happens when someone calls that phone number. You can edit individual phone numbers by clicking on the three dots next to the phone number and select edit. Additionally, you can put numbers into groups and do bulk edit options as well. So whatever preference you prefer, I like using the groups, makes it a little bit easier. Now for the next step, we'll need to bring in a contact list of people to call. I'll be going over this process, but beforehand, I did want to point out that there's another option that you can subscribe to this lead list add-on where you just jump in, type in an area, let's say Phoenix, for example, and then you can select from these different lead types. We have vacant lots, vacant, tired landlords, tax defaults, pre-foreclosures, out-of-state owner, for sale by owner, and failed listings. You can choose a select amount or select all just by select checking the box. Then you'll scroll down and you can name this list. You can also assign it to a campaign if you have one created. For today, I'm gonna skip this as I'll be going over this step in a later portion of this video. And then the system's going to ask you what you wanna do in the case that there's duplicates. We'll be going over this in a later step. Once you've made your selections, hit import and it'll save it to your contact list, which again, you can either add to a campaign at the moment or later on. Let's go over importing a contact list. Start by clicking on contacts from the left-hand menu. This is going to take us to our contacts page where you can view the individual contacts in your account and see some of their information, but we'll wanna go and select contact lists. Once you're in here, we're gonna select import contacts and then we're gonna click here to select from our downloads or drag and drop if you have a file on another screen. Now you'll see the system does a pretty good job of auto mapping the source fields to the destination fields, source fields just being how it's labeled on your spreadsheet and the destination field being how it's listed in the dialer. Now, as I mentioned, the system does do a pretty good job auto mapping this information, but you'll do want to double check that stuff just to make sure that everything is correct. If you do notice that something is not mapped appropriately, just click from the drop down and select the right field. Now that I've confirmed that everything looks good, I'm going to hit next. Again, we're going to name this contact list. This was a high equity list, so I'll name this high equity. Again, you can select a pre-existing campaign to add this to, but we're going to skip this step as I'll be showing you the campaign creation in the next step. Here again, it's going to ask you what you want to do with duplicate contacts, duplicate phone numbers that are happen to be on this file. You have three options, reject, keep old, or keep new. Reject is simply going to reject that contact, not add it into the system. You're gonna tell the system that you don't want that contact in there, just leave it out. If you choose to keep old, that's going to keep the duplicate phone number with the original contact that's already in your dialer. It will add the new contact on the spreadsheet, but it will not associate that phone number with it. Now, keep new is going to keep the phone number with the new contact record that you're importing today. So it is going to take the phone number from the original contact record and add it to the new one that you're importing. This is a really good common practice if you're constantly updating and reskip tracing records to get new information. However, no matter which option you select, the system will never delete any of your previous call notes and history or recordings, so that will never get lost. And then after just a minute, depending on the size of your file, the system is going to provide you with a nice little breakdown of the success of your imported spreadsheet. You'll see, you can see the number of duplicates if there's any, any existing contacts, any known litigators, federal DNC contacts, and then as well as misformed leads. This is something really important to keep an eye out for. It simply just means that there was some information missing from the spreadsheet, such as a name or a phone number. And now the last step in order to start making calls is to create a campaign. Go to campaigns. From here, click on new campaign. We'll run through all the different rules so you understand the different options that are available to you. From the top, we're going to start by selecting our dialing mode. You have two options, preview and predictive. Preview mode is going to be very similar to manual dialing where it'll pop up the contact record in front of you. You'll click on the button to manually make the call and go about that with each contact. Predictive dialer is going to be more common, the multi-line dialing tool, dialing multiple lines at a time, getting you connected with prospects faster. Next, you're going to select the agent or agents who will be able to access this campaign. If you're gonna be the one dialing, you definitely wanna make sure that you're selecting your name, but you do need at least one. Once you've made that selection, you're going to now select the phone numbers that you're going to use for these contacts, the number that you're gonna to use to call. So I'm gonna select my number group, and then we're going to select the contact list. What people are we gonna actually call to? So we're gonna select that list that I just added. It's gonna be at the very bottom of this dropdown. Here's my high equity list, perfect. Next, we're gonna name the campaign. 
I like to name this something similar to the campaign or the contact list itself. And then you'll see all of the different call results that are going to be available during this campaign. This is something that I'll touch in the next step. So we'll leave that. You can open this advanced configuration to see even more settings available for your campaigns. However, we have set these up to be what we find is best practice. So you shouldn't have to touch these settings too much, but they are here in case you want to. So we'll run through them. We have our calling order. Adaptive is where it's going to grab the first contact's first phone number, call it, and then do that with the second contact's first number, third contact's third first number, and so on. It'll dial through all of the contact's first number and then move on to the second, third, and so on. If you've set up lead scoring in your account, you can choose to dial from the highest score or the lowest score first. We always recommend just setting it to adaptive. For the call connect type, always just leave this set to automatic answer. If you have it set to manual answer, your team would have to physically accept the call when someone's calling. So it does tend to slow things down. So you just wanna leave it to automatic answer. Next is the dialing behavior. You have the max calls per day, which I would typically suggest leaving this set at zero, unless for any reason you have a certain number of connected calls that you wanna make before the campaign stops and shuts off. You have your simultaneous dials per agent. System automatically sets it to three. If you are in the advanced plan, you can go up to five. However, we do recommend staying at around three. Next, you have your max attempts per record. This means how many times is it going to call that person without them picking up before moving on to the next record. You also have your retry time. Again, we have this set to three hours. You could adjust your max attempts per record to reduce that, but I definitely wouldn't suggest doing more than that. You have your queue behavior, your abandonment timeout. How long does the line stay active before it gets abandoned? Smart local presence. This is another feature that's only available to the advanced plan. We're going to set this to disable today. Basically, it's going to choose a phone number closest to the contact that you're calling if you have multiple phone numbers in multiple markets in your campaign. Next, if you are integrated with Podio, you can set up your Podio integration here. You have a lead sheet that you can add. And then down here, you have additional settings for call recording. The system will always have the call recordings turned on unless you want to come in and turn them off. Answering machine detection, this is something that will impact your connection rate. It's gonna scrub out about 80% of answering machines. What it's doing is the system basically listening to the first few seconds of the call to determine if it's a live person or an answering machine to bypass. So naturally that's gonna create a little bit of a delay and can impact your connection rate. So do use this with caution. You can choose to suppress the federal do not call lists. Your systems do not call list. Again, these are folks that you have previously spoken to and have requested not to call you. So definitely wanna make sure that that is turned on. And then you can choose to suppress wireless contacts. And then the system will always suppress known litigators automatically. Next, you wanna select the time zone that this campaign can be used. If there's, uh, you know, definitely don't wanna be calling people after hours or too early in the day. Once you've made all your campaign settings and you're ready to go, accept the terms and conditions and hit save. Once you have your campaign saved with all of your contacts, phone numbers and call results, you're ready to start dialing. We're gonna click on the phone icon at the very top of your screen. And then we're going to select the campaign that we wanna join. Keep in mind, if you have the magic wand, it is a predictive dialer. And if it is a eyeball icon like it is over here, that's gonna be a preview dialer. But so for today, we're going to join the high equity list that we just created. So we'll hit join. The system will then begin to grab phone numbers and they'll light up right here once you have the set of three dialing. Give this a moment to begin. Once it's dialing, I'll show you where you can see the contacts that are being dialed. Simply just click on this arrow here. You can see the names of those who are dialing. Once you are connected, you'll have all of the contact information listed on the screen in front of you. And when you're done with the call, simply just hit the red button to end the call and disposition it. For this one, I'm gonna mark it do not contact so that we don't accidentally call this person back again. Down here, you can leave some notes. For this example, we'll put not interested and then hit save. Now with predictive dialer, all you have to do is sit back and the system's gonna continue dialing until the next person picks up. When that happens, again, just hit end, disposition the call. What's really nice is while it's still dialing in the background, you have all these other tabs to view for your contacts. You can see property details, activities, campaigns that they're associated with, any notes that you have and saved, and then the lead sheets as well. Now, when you're ready to stop calling, hit end call, disposition, and then we're gonna click on this little megaphone icon down here and hit leave. One last step to cover, not necessarily anything that is required before dialing, but just something worth noting is the call results. You'll definitely wanna review the different call result rules so that you understand what's happening when you select them during your calling sessions. So under phone systems, select call results. 
As you can see, I have a ton that I've made customized to my own dialing preferences. So yours may look a little bit different. You can add and edit the existing ones if you'd like. Simply click on the pencil icon to the right of the call result and you can change the name, edit the color. You can select what campaigns it's available in and you can select the different rules. So as you can see, the disconnected number call result automatically marks it as do not redial that phone number since it's disconnected, no point in redialing it. So it's just something that you'll wanna become familiar with and make some customization edits if you'd like. Now, you should have all of the information that you need to feel super confident using the dialer moving forward.